Dear Zepsis survivors, families and relatives, dear members of the big, big and growing Zepsis family, today I speak for, to you on behalf of the German Zepsis Foundation, the Zepsis Stiftung in Berlin. <laughs> and I would like to, after we heard already a lot about the uh, difficulties and getting our numbers and our data right, I want to draw your attention to yet another point, which is Zepsis awareness or health literacy among the general pop population in Germany. And to acquire the, here we teamed up with an institute of demoscopy in Allensbach, which is a well-known name in Germany, um, because we needed, we wanted to get an, uh, um, an idea of uh, yeah, the, the general sepsis knowledge of the general population in Germany. Um, the institute, uh, Allensbach um, is a well-known uh, name in Germany, as I said. They, we conducted, they conducted face-to-face uh, -face interviews, so no telephone interviews. Also, um, yeah, they presented some cards to the people and explained a little bit to them, so it was a really high-quality survey. Um, we asked uh, about 1,040 individuals in total in Germany. And it was the beginning of this year, uh, February 24th until March 8th. So it was after people already heard from the news about yeah, the pandemic, immune system, vaccination. They were like bombarded daily by news about these subjects. And um, the, we, the, we analyzed the data later. It was all done within the Deutschland Ican Sepsis campaign. My uh, lovely colleague, Ellen, will tell you later more about this campaign. It was funded by the German Ministry, Federal Ministry of Health. So let's start with the good news first. Uh, the first question we asked, like, if people heard about the term sepsis, do they know what it is? And the vast majority of people said, yes, I heard the term before. I have, like, an idea about what it is. Those people who haven't heard about sepsis, which was a minority, uh, they at least they heard about uh, yeah, bloodstream infection, uh, blutvergiftung. Uh, this is the part of the good news I already presented. We already presented this data to the Ministry of Health. Uh, it was a video call of maybe like 45 minutes of bad news. You have to love your job. And we are currently preparing a scientific publication, but I want to present you some uh, data advanced. Um, of course, we asked people what they think about what is the cause of sepsis and uh, yeah, the good news here is that the majority agreed that uh, sepsis is always caused by an infection, which is, which is right, of course. However, uh, we then asked a little bit more in depth, like if they thought that uh, it is caused by an infection like pneumonia, kidney, or bladder infection, which are, of course, uh, among the main causes of sepsis. But here, the numbers went down. It was only like 41% that said, yes, these are the causes of the infection. But when we asked about it, sepsis is always caused by an infected wound, here the people agreed. And when we asked a little further on about whether the people believed or not if sepsis can be caused by influenza or COVID-19, which is of course the case, not even 10% said yes to this uh, answer. What we see here is that people kind of seem to lack a real understanding about infectious diseases. What, what is all, in, what, what can count as an infectious disease? What is the connection to inflammatory processes? And uh, yeah, they stick to this belief that sepsis is always uh, caused by an infected wound. Uh, we also asked about risk factors here. We also have uh, very mixed results. Uh, people uh, mostly agreed that yes, uh, Persons with a weakened immune system uh, are under risk and uh, people that recover from surgery. But for example, people suffering from severe chronic diseases, which is basically a no-brainer. Here, not even half of the people agreed. And if we go, yeah, people without a spleen or people that already survived a sepsis. So it is, yeah, a very, very mixed results and more or less people are guessing. Uh, we, we also asked about the symptoms and about the prevalence, mortality. 
people did not know about any of those. Uh, I will spare you the details. However, why, this is another reason why we teamed up with the Institute of Allensbach, because they uh, always ask for their commercial clients uh, a huge number of demographic data, and we were hoping to identify specific subgroups of the German population where uh, sepsis knowledge is especially bad so that we could uh, target the, them with uh, some yeah, customized campaign work. However, um, we really did our best. Uh, we uh, did a regression analysis and uh, we started with the linear regression and we also did a um, uh, further, we, we were really looking for demographic factors that uh, correlated with the sepsis knowledge in general and we didn't really find any. Uh, what we found is that 6% six, six which is really, really low uh, correlation was if people knew somebody that, uh, that suffered from sepsis, a colleague or a family member, and of course if somebody you know died of sepsis then maybe you get a little bit interested, but still 6% is very, very low. And even what you would imagine, like uh, socioeconomic status or education, educational background, um, there is almost no, no, no correlation between any of the demographic factors and the sepsis knowledge in general. Even we had a small group of people that survived the sepsis or that, that knew that they, uh, they received a diagnosis that they had a sepsis. Of course, this result has to be taken with a grain of salt because it was a relatively small number compared to the rest of the group. But this, these people, had there was basically virtually no, no difference in their sepsis knowledge with the rest of the population, which uh, means that even those that had been released from the hospital didn't really know about it and about the symptoms or, or any of the other items we asked. Thus, the first conclusion that we can draw from this data is that we really need large-scale awareness campaigns that uh, target the general audience. And here we already had uh, a first test run and approach in the Zepsis Wissen project that uh, another lovely colleague of mine, uh, Wiltrud, will later also present you today um, because we were like sponsored by uh, Wall and by Stör to publicity campaigns. We could launch uh, in Brandenburg and Berlin as a model, reason, uh, model region uh, our uh, Zepsis Wissen campaign. Um, we did it like huge billboards and billboards in the train stations, uh, but also uh, huge social media activities. And um, we also had some digital animations um, to really target the general population. And we saw that this was also, this created a huge amount of awareness. It was also picked up by the traditional media. Um, we, we did the, the, the television, uh, regional German television, uh, uh, where it was, uh, did, did a feature on our campaign and uh, yeah, with hundreds and thousands of uh, viewers. However, there, there is one more point uh, of data I wanted to show you. It was my personal um, yeah, moment of uh, okay. very big sadness, but Professor Reinhardt in his big energy and enthusiasm looked at the data and was like, oh, this already looks much better than our last survey. And it was the question uh, about vaccination and prevention by vaccination. So we asked uh, if people believed that by a vaccination against, for example, pneumococci, uh, you could decrease the uh, risk of sepsis. And unfortunately, only about 21% of the people said yes, by vaccination helps uh, is a preventive measure. 42% uh, even said no, it has no influence, and 37% said like, yeah, I don't know, I have no idea. And this, of course, uh, has to be seen in the context of the pandemic where people actually were informed about vaccination and prevention and so on. And it, this is, here I want to draw attention to another point. Uh, already in some years ago, before the pandemic and before uh, recent uh, developments in the Ukraine, uh, um, it, there, were, there were scientific papers on the uh, yeah, power of the internet troll and of the propaganda 
uh, that is um, abusing uh, and manipulating the people. That, I, I mean, what we see here is that if people lack health literacy and they lack the knowledge, uh, and the lack of knowledge creates fear and suspicion, superstition, and these feeling sentiments are then targeted and manipulated by foreign governments. It is a no coincidence that those who were against vaccination now are pro-Putin, and we have to see that there are huge amounts of money spent by foreign states to abuse our democratic system, our system of uh, free speech, and to manipulate those people. So everyone that says, yeah, these are people that have a different opinion is underestimating the problem here because these are not people that have another opinion. They are really severely manipulated uh, with certain goals. And unfortunately, this is, Germany is not so much aware of this fact in, in, uh, in America, and there are like more high-ranking publications about this problem. And I think also in Germany, we really have to invest huge amounts of money here to counteract uh, the other, uh, yeah, what, what other uh, foreign governments are investing here in the disinformation campaigns to really inform people and raise health literacy based on evidence and based on scientific facts. Thank you very much. Thank you.